Um, today there's a wealth of potentially dangerous foods and drugs available for purchase, yet most of you are probably completely unaware of such threats. The dietary supplement industry, which includes various products from vitamins and proteins to even sexual en enhancement tablets, is widely unregulated and no claim made by the industry has to be true. Worse than this, in past years, dangerous drugs such as amphetamines and steroids have found their way into products that consumers like you thought were safe. Nine of 17 of you answered my audience analysis that you thought the FDA regulates the supplement industry. This shows that you may feel safe buying any supplements, but this should not be the case. In this speech, you will all learn what is broken about the industry that fills the shelves of GNCs and vitamin shops nationwide and understand what we can all do to make this a safer market for health conscious consumers. To go along with my personal knowledge from being around the weightlifting community for the past two years, for the past two weeks I've been researching the ins and outs of the dietary supplement industry. As false claims and dangerous products flood the burgeoning market, we'll see what we can do to stop this crisis. Let's now see how people are at risk when placing trust in the dietary supplement companies. As a massive threat in the United States, the dietary supplement industry has a great influence. As a massive industry in the United States, the dietary supplement industry has a great influence upon the health of Americans, yet their products are not always effective nor safe. According to Million Dollar Muscle, a historic and sociological perspective of the fitness industry by Adrian James Tan, the size of the US supplement industry is $36.7 billion a year. In the past, many supplements have been proven unsafe and pulled from shelves after already reaching consumers. Pre-workout supplements, which are typically amino acid blends with high concentrations of caffeine marketed to weightlifters looking to get an edge in the gym, such as Jack 3 d um, used to contain an illegal stimulant called DMAA-13. And for years, this product was marketed and sold well until it was pulled after multiple deaths of users. In 2011 alone, $100 million worth of dangerous DMA-13 containing supplements were sold. According to the Journal of, American, of the American Medical Association, over one half of the drugs recalled by the FDA between 2004 and 2012 were marketed as dietary supplements. Supplements have even hit the market containing traces of steroids. Between 2009 and 2013, four products were pulled from the market after being found to contain traces of anabolic steroids. False claims are all too frequently made by the industry, as it is difficult to manage the kinds of claims that are made in an industry of unproven remedies and concoctions. According to the Health and Fitness uh, Claims page on the Federal Trade Commission website, over the last decade, over 120 lawsuits have been filed against supplement companies for false claims. According to another article by the Journal of the American Medical Association, increased advertising has given consumers a false sense of safety when buying these products. Since 1994, dietary supplement sales have increased nearly 80%. There are over 7,300 GNC stores and over 480 vitamin shop locations nationwide. 70% of supplement companies have strayed from FDA requirements over the past five years, and yet half of Americans consume some sort of dietary supplement daily, according to an article by Jeffrey Bassinger, I Access, on October 22, 2015. If we continue to do nothing about the massive issues associated with this market, more and more Americans will remain at risk of consuming dangerous products. When confronted with a dangerous problem, we as Americans have a responsibility to voice our complaints to our local politicians. The main problem in the supplement industry is that the supplements are classified as food, not drugs. Therefore, they're not allowed to be screened by the FDA until after they've hit markets. According to the User's Guide of Nutritional Supplements, there's little the FDA can do to improve the situation unless Congress legislates more regulatory authority for the agency. If Congress decides to regulate the supplement industry, giving the FDA the ability to abuse supplements before they hit the market, dangerous side effects of taking banned substances could easily be avoided. One can look to the financial industry post-depression to see that regulation does indeed work. The, pro the prior financial system had bankrupted the country. By putting a strict set of codes and agencies to watch over it, the industry stabilized until a period of deregulation, of course. The same would be the case if we were to tighten restrictions, such as on the purity of substances or the ingredient safety um, in the dietary supplement industry. I implore you to all write your local congressmen 
and women, for we need to protect unknown consumers of America from consuming dangerous supplements. You can also vote with your dollars. By pledging to only buy from companies with clean track records, you can show that the only supplements you're interested in are the good, clean ones. It is vital for the future health of our country for us to implement regulation for the dietary supplement industry. If we continue to let supplement companies run wild, the health effects could be ad adverse and substantial. In my audit analysis conducted on October 19th, all of you knew that supplements were not always safe. But why shouldn't they be? If we implement regulation to allow the FDA to screen supplements before they hit shelves, we can ensure that taking these products that are supposed to improve health actually do so. If the industry falls along its current growth level, in 10 years, the industry will reach $66 billion a year in annual sales. We need to ensure that these $66 billion are in safe products. Right now, there's a massive industry out there selling various uh, kinds of potentially dangerous products to unknown consumers. With supplements containing steroids and banned stimulants already having been on the market, who knows what the future will bring? According to my audience analysis, 8 of 17 of you take some sort of supplement. For the, for the consumers here and all of you as American citizens, it's your responsibility to push public policy towards the regulation of this wild west of an industry. Also, I challenge you to do your research before buying supplements. Only purchase products from companies with proven clean track records. We all have a responsibility to protect one another from dangerous products. Until we fix this industry, trying to stay healthy could have deadly consequences.